we greet the church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I would like to invite those who can to stand up so that we may read the word of the Lord in Romans chapter 17 verses 11 and 2. The church I was in Roman, uh, chapter 13, <laughs> verses 11 and 12. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. Yes, he said 17. So I'm going to say it again. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. It's here, right? Very well. So let us read. And so, and do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when than when we first believed the night is far spent the day is at hand therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light amen up until then Lord Father, we ask that you speak with us through your word. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, this letter was directed towards a church to the brethren that were in Rome. Rome was the capital where there was it was established um, we can even say uh, Christianity was established there a secular Christianity because the great struggle of the church was this. Because the Roman Empire wanted to oppose to the Christian brethren. Isn't that true? So then they began to persecute the, the Christians, throwing them on on the arenas, arenas uh, where the animals, the wild animals, would come and would attack them and attack the, the brethren. Why? Because they wanted to put an end to the message of the Christian church, the primitive, primitive church. And what was the message of the primitive church? that Paul highlights here saying the just will live by faith there is no there is no salvation outside of Jesus Christ and Jesus will come back that was the message of the church the primitive church however Rome wanted to turn into something relative. Rome wanted to oppose to this message. And what did it do? An emperor, a Roman Empire, a Roman Emperor, 
he said the following. Now, since we try to uh, destroy the Christians, and we were unable because the more we kill them, more the church grew because of the testimony of the brethren that were being killed on the bonfires, uh, the, on the arenas, praising the Lord because the just shall live by faith. So then Constantine came and brought it all together. So now everyone is a Christian under the Roman Empire. So now the, there is there is a saying that says, if you cannot go against your enemy, then join him. Isn't that a saying like that? So then, when this union was established, so then it came upon the midst of the church, the paganism. Things came that should not enter into the church, heresies. But there came a group of of the the ones who were left, the faithful. Because throughout the, on the entire Bible, we'll see that there was always there was always the faithful, right? In Babylon, when they were brought captive, the youth, when they were taken to Babylon, the one the only ones who were left were those that were they stayed in Babylon. When Daniel said. Look, King, I'm not going to contaminate myself with with um, your food. So now Paul, he writes a letter alerting the brethren, the faithful brethren that remained in Rome. He was saying, and do do this knowing the time that now is it is high time to awake out of sleep why is that because in the midst of all of this uh, the sleepness came up and the church i'm not saying that everyone but the church they gave themselves up they thought, oh, now it's every, everything is very well. We are not going to be persecuted anymore. There is only one thing that is bothering us here and there. But we'll simply act like it doesn't exist. What would be great would be to feel comfortable here. with this situation. So then Paul says, it is time for you to know the time, the moment. What is the moment that you are living there in Rome? It is good that you know the time. And I remember that when I became a Christian, I converted. I was young still, I was a youth. And at that time, then, I was with the countryside. You were completely isolated, you were completely um, set aside. People say, oh, there comes a Christian. There comes the person that doesn't drink or smoke. And then afterwards, even the medicine began saying that smoking is bad for you. 
and that drinking is unhealthy. But this is something that so philosophical things, so scientific um, uh, study. But what Jesus wants to show that the Christian, the Christian cannot be a slave of the things of this world because this world offers us many things in order to slave us. People that live on the entire night uh, uh, s awake and they have to inject things on their arms. They, they are slaves to those things. So then knowing and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Right? The sleep here, there, and Paul was preaching, and that youth was at the window. There was light on the environment where Paul was. There was celebration, there was deliverance, there was cure. The word of the Lord was there, but the youth was at the window. He was um, conflicted between being in the world and the light, and the darkness and the light. And a sleeplessness came upon him, and he fell. Because when the person let himself uh, being controlled by the, the spiritual sleeplessness, it is dangerous. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Because there are many that say, look, since the time of my grandparents that they keep saying that Jesus is going to come. He, he has already departed. He died. And they keep saying that he is coming back. My beloved, our salvation is much closer than what it was on that time when we accepted Him. And the time is a time, the time of pain, the time of confusion. I was looking at a person giving a speech and that person picked up the Bible and said we need to put an end to this culture Judaic culture Christian Judaic we need to put an end to this very recently this week so there is a movement to confuse man's mind. But we need to preserve our salvation. Because Jesus soon will come back. On Sunday morning, we, were, we have been studying the seven letters of uh, Revelation. It speaks of seven times. It speaks of the trajectory of the church. And the night has passed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us 
cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. My beloved, we have a resource at our hands, which are the weapons of light, the fasting, coming to early dawn services, the reading of the word, and only like this we will be able to be victorious uh, and overcome the works of darkness, only using the weapons of light, the resources that the Lord has left for each one of us. We should not think that we will overcome using our own, our own human reason, our own resources. We, will not, we are not going to be victorious. We will be victorious using the spiritual weapons. And the Lord tonight has shown a woman that is here tonight. She is on her youth. She was harmed. And on that occasion, she, she didn't want to show this wound to anyone, and she tried to heal that wound herself and self-medicate. And what happened was that this wound was healed on the outside, but on the inside there was a small infection. And it was shown the vision that when she, when she touched or she stumbled anywhere and touched that place, she felt pain, and she would remember. But she said, "I'm so afraid of opening up this wound." Of, of healing this wound, taking care of this. I don't want to open up and see on the inside. But the Lord in a vision has shown that tonight angels came close to this woman and they, they began to do an operation on, on that wound. And she felt very um, confident. She was saying, now I am in good hands because they are going to treat me and they are going to heal me. And that's how it happened. And this wound, it was related. <coughs> the things there um, are connected with her family. The Lord has said in the vision that the person herself would identify with this. But what is most important is that the Lord has operated on the wound. The Lord has healed that person. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The night has passed. The night is far spent. What was left behind is past. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. The old things are past. The Apostle Paul says the following, I proceed walking forward, leaving behind the things that of my past. There is no time for us to be looking behind. Oh, but the brother or the sister and 17-something 
Somebody said a word to me that hurt me, and to this day, I'm bitter about it. This is not a moment for, for us to do this. It's a moment for us to look forward. This is a moment to be, to be using the weapons of light. Leave the bitterness behind, the, the bad feelings. What is not going to edify us? Knowing the time. Paul says that we need to know the time. Because there's a moment, a moment called, a time called soon. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. The psalmist David said, uh, the crying may last an entire night, but the joy comes in the morning. The morning speaks of eternity, the new day. It's a new hope. It's a new phase for the church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God bless us all through his word. Let us praise the name of the Lord with a song.
Quanto Jesus. Aleluia. Therefore, let us cast off it's this time for us to awake from our sleep. The moment in which we need to be seeking the Lord. The world is deep in darkness. The work of darkness, like there in Egypt, there was darkness. Well, there were, they could be touched, but in, in the house of the Hebrews, there was light. And we are living this moment. The darkness in the world, there, there, those are thick darknesses. But there is a people that is in the light, because Jesus, Jesus is the light. We are, I'm not saying that we are better than them. Much on the contrary. Jesus said, "I came." The, I came to the ones who were sick. If we are all here, it was because one day we recognized our state. And we gave to the Lord, uh, we gave our heart to our Lord so that the Lord would establish in us, establish His work of salvation in us, the work, the project, the project of salvation. This is the great work of the Lord. It is our salvation. May God bless us tonight. Now I invite the church to send up we're coming to the end of the service. This future gift regarding this woman that the Lord tonight has operated greatly in her life. Receive this. Because the night, the night has passed. The things that passed, don't keep remembering those things that have already passed. Begin a new walk. Jesus, give us this opportunity of every day. So we, we may, may be able to renew our walk. Because the mercies of the Lord, they are the cause of us not to be consumed. So let us gra grab a hold to this. Let us not look behind. Let's not look to the difficulties. We have difficulties. I would not be honest if I said that there were no difficulties. And Jesus said, in the world, you would have afflictions. No one here is being deceived. But 
and it's a time for us to awake from our sleep. Be more attached to the things of the Lord. Let us pray, Lord Father. We praise you and give you thanks because one day you have been able to reach us and we are in your presence here, our Father, not because we are deserving, but because one day your mercy was able to reach us. We praise you, Lord, because one day we will live with you in eternity. Blessed be your name, Lord. Because you have given us the resources, the weapons, for us to, to be victorious in this world of darkness. Hallelujah. Be given to your name, Lord. Receive, Lord, the service that was made for you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. Just reminding the brethren about the service tomorrow. Tomorrow, the Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. And the service at night at 7.30. And those who still want uh, prayer, remain where you are. We will be going towards you. Towards you. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. Okay.